Where or in what things are you rooted? Uh, and now here's a kid who has found some big roots to clamber on. And uh, well, perhaps you and I are rooted in some big things. Um, the stability of the nation, the stability of the dollar, the fairness of elections, the, uh, yeah, etc. right? Well, in the ancient world, existence was rooted in the four elements. Now, this is Greek philosophy from uh, three centuries before Jesus was born. But, of course, as Greek philosophy and language uh, kind of permeated the world, this is how people saw things in those days. And the elements were earth, air, fire, and water. And it makes some sense because those things are, are sort of uh, directly impacting upon us, right? As we live in this world, uh, the earth is there and, and the air, we feel it as the wind blows and, and fire. You know, my father used to say, uh, fire is a wonderful servant but a terrible master. And of course, fire was always present and, and water, one of the first things that our Lord created upon this earth, water. And in our gospel today, the demon throws the boy into fire and water. And I've always found it interesting that, and this is not the topic of the message, that, uh, that the demon would throw the boy into those two creations of God, which are, of course, so useful to life upon this earth. Uh, but the, dis the demon desired to disrupt this boy and his family's life upon this earth. And so the father coming to Jesus said, can you, will you? And he said, I believe, help my unbelief. Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and from his son Jesus, the Christ. Help my unbelief. What things hinder faith? What things add to unbelief. What things hinder faith? Well, there are many, are there not? So how about this? A lack of sympathy in the church. And you all know people who have been burned by a church here or there, one way or the other. You know, maybe from uh, something as simple as you volunteer to do something and you get here to do it and somebody says, I don't need you today. Well, that's discouraging. Lack of sympathy in the church. And there are many worse examples than that. Um, in uh, Mark 10, for example, uh, uh, people are bringing their children to Jesus for a blessing. And the apostles stop them, uh, deter them, don't bug the man. And uh, talk, that's the church telling those people not to bring their kids to Jesus. And of course, he reacts to that and you know, what he says and how he does it. Well, there are some others as well. Discouraging circumstances in our lives. Talk about <laughs> hindering faith. You know, stuff happens to us, doesn't it? In just all kinds of avenues of life. And we wonder sometimes, you know, why me? Or, or Lord, what are, you, what are you thinking here? Talk about hindering faith. You know, Patty, it's been seven or eight years now, Patty's second daughter was stricken with leukemia as a freshman in high school. Now, think of that. She missed a year. She might well have died. And Patty just told me this morning that that kid is in her third year at St. Olaf and uh, in nursing. And so, you know, talk about a hindrance in the moment of faith and a proof of Christ's desire to be with us and to help us and to restore that hindered faith. Unbelieving friends, you got any? <laughs> Unbelieving friends, talk about a hindrance to faith. Why do you spend all that time at church? It doesn't mean anything anyway. There is no God. Just look at Washington. Unbelieving friends, 
Yeah. And examples of that are, are all throughout Scripture. This particular one um, in Mark 5, the, the leader of the synagogue, d- daughter, was dying at home. And he, he reached out to Jesus. Now think of this. This is the opposition. You know, this is the left reaching out to the right here. This is the synagogue leader reaching to Jesus and asking him to come and to help, do something, will you? And the friends of the synagogue leader said, don't bother, she's dead anyway, who cares? Why do you trust him? Unbelieving friends, a hindrance of faith. And you know that story. Jesus took this kid by the hand and just raised her up back into life. Scoffers, scoffers. There's a lot of scoffers in this world. A lot of scoffers where if you listen to them enough, they're all over the media. They're everywhere. Folks who suggest that there is no God, there can't be such a thing as a son of God, there certainly is no such thing as heaven. We may be in hell on earth, but, but scoffers, and they've, they're all through scripture as well. And you know them. You know people who are simply scoffing at the possibility of a thing like Yahweh, God himself, the creator of this world. You know, the Pharisees, here's an example uh, in in John 9, um, the Pharisees didn't believe the guy, the guy who had been healed. The guy had been healed, he's standing there in front of them and they said, nah, that wasn't you, it never happened, we don't believe it all kinds of scoffers in this world. You have in your life experienced or known about miracles, frankly, that have occurred perhaps in your life. And there are those who would say, well, that's coincidence, isn't it? And so scoffing takes all kinds of forms. Well, divine delays. You've prayed for things over and over. And there are things for which you have prayed that God has not taken care of, at least in the way you desire. And of course, he answers our prayers, um, either yes, no, or not at this time kind of thing. But it's hard when we are asking. And Jesus himself says, ask and you shall receive. And when we don't right away, or the answer is a little different than we would like, well, that is really discouraging. In John 11, Lazarus has died. And Jesus comes, and the sisters said, if you'd only been here, we, we sent for you, and you didn't come in time. And yet Jesus was there to fix that issue as well. It's a lot of things that hinder faith, are there not? Well, what things encourage faith? I didn't want to write write the rest of this message, so I thought I would bring this issue to you. What things encourage faith? I want to hear it from you. What things encourage faith? What? Friends. Good Christian friends are encouraging of faith. Good. Good start. Kathy? Prayer encourages faith, you bet. If you enter into a relationship with God through prayer, that, is, that does encourage your faith, even, even if he in the moment says no. What things encourage faith? The sound of a, of a baby encourages faith in me. But somebody said something. What things encourage faith? I'm sorry? The Holy Spirit is there to encourage faith. You betcha. Given us in our baptism, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit, the whole purpose is to encourage faith in us. You bet. What else? There's a hand up here. Worship encourages faith. I pray. Yeah, thank you for being here. If there's anything that encourages faith, it is those Christian friends, it is is the Holy Spirit gathering us together in this way. You bet. Eddie? Communion. Communion. Talk about encouraging faith. The very moment of forgiveness of sin as you take and taste and touch those elements. Boy, you betcha. There was one over here. 
prayer. Pastor. Okay, what did you say? Pastor. Pastors encourage faith? <laughs> well, thank you for your confidence in us. Oh, music in, in this room. It's amazing, isn't it? And, and the, today's music is incredible. We are blessed here to have special music and an organist that does what he does. And our hymnal is full of music that encourages our faith. After all, it is Christological, the hymns that we sing here, encouraging faith by teaching us who God is, what he does for us, and how we might respond to that music. You bet there was another being in the Word, the very Word of God. Talk about an encouragement. We have some wonderful Bible studies here, and you do at home as well. Open that thing up. Talk about an encourager of faith. It draws you in to the Lord, doesn't it? Your Bible study. Okay, good. You may not have heard that. Reading stories about persecuted Christians around the world and reading about their faith and how they deal with such a thing. We're fortunate here. We get criticized in so many ways, but our lives are not on the line. And as Claire says, there are so many places in this world where the lives of Christians are taken daily and threatened daily. Good point. What else? Yes. She likes small miracles in everyday life. And an example was the flight is on time. <laughs> Does that ever happen? Here's, I'll be right there. Here's a small miracle that I experience occasionally. At Christmas time, there's a parking lot in front of Nordstrom. <laughs> the miracle, yes. Experience it for yourself, experiencing healing. You know, you've seen it as you lost your sister and your brother-in-law has gone through what he has and the woman that should be sitting between the two of you has healed up and is not here yet, but next week perhaps. Yeah, there are just so many ways. One last one. Anybody got another one? Those Christian movies that are out today. Christian movies. That's interesting. Okay. All right, good. Like Halloween 6 and that kind of stuff. <laughs> Yeah. Somebody said new members, that God sends us people. You know, one thing about Crown of Life is we are pretty regularly sending people to heaven and to Minnesota, which is, <laughs> that is two different things. But we're so blessed, and you'll see in just a few minutes that the Lord sends. Yeah, there was one other. Yeah. Cross. What? Cross. Well, the cross itself. Okay, and somebody said to me last night afterwards that coming in here and seeing that is a reminder. And you know, it's an empty cross because we like to celebrate the resurrection beyond the death upon that cross. All right, one more. There was another one. Kathy? Yeah. The people in our families who went before us who were filled with faith. Oh. People in our family who have gone before us, an encourager of faith, and we remember the faith in them. You know, that book there, that book is from the 19th century, and, and it, was, it was owned, and I don't know how we got it, but it was owned by a young woman who put materials, articles of her faith between those pages, and occasionally I'll open it up and find something, and it's a reminder that it, there are many generations ahead of us. One last one. Yeah. Answered prayer. Answered prayer, you bet. And it can be a challenge because sometimes they're answered in a way we don't want. But answered prayer, you bet. Well, I appreciate your finishing my message. Oh, you, you, Lynn, okay, Lynn. <laughs> Her whole life, she has been in Christian education. So this was an advertisement for Lutheran Christian <laughs> education. And the truth is, if it were not for that, I wouldn't be here today because my kid went K through eight through Lutheran school and 
changed my life in the doing. I thank you for completing my message. I'll look for that next week, too, on a different topic. <laughs> as we come together in Jesus' name, amen. amen.